In order to install this bidet toilet, I had to add a new outlet to this powder room. And that wasn't hard at all because I used the trick of connecting the new outlet to an existing outlet. The only outlet that was in this room is the one right here and I did not connect the new outlet to this one. If I had used this outlet, I would have installed the new outlet right here next to the bidet and that wouldn't have been hard either. The wires would have been attached to this wall inside the sink cabinet but there was an easier solution check this out there was an outlet right outside the bathroom which made adding another outlet on the other side of the same wall a cinch first i shut off the power coming into this outlet in the hallway by turning off the switch at the breaker panel in my basement and then double checked by using this outlet tester when there's no power to the outlet nothing lights up when the electrical connections have been made correctly and there's power to the outlet, the two yellow lights will come on, which you'll see later. I switched to using a manual screwdriver because the top screw was on so tightly that my electric screwdriver didn't work on the screw. You can see here that there's a hole at the top bringing in a set of wires and a hole at the bottom bringing in another set of wires. I'm going to make a third hole by breaking the tab in this lower left corner and I'm going to feed through this hole a new set of wires that will connect this outlet to the new outlet that I'm going to install. To break the tab, get a screwdriver and just tap on it firmly with a hammer. Now I'm going to look in through this hole with my boroscope to see what's behind the drywall to make sure that I won't be cutting any wires when I cut a hole into the drywall for my new outlet. The coast looks clear. I don't see any wires. I only see a stud. Now I'm inside the bathroom and I'm using a stud finder to locate the stud that I saw with my boroscope so that I don't try to cut into drywall that's on top of a stud. The stud is located at the very edge of this wall so I know not to install the box too far to the right. I'm using the electrical box as the template to mark where I need to cut and using my handy dandy oscillating multi-tool to cut the drywall. I only needed a cable that's this long to connect the two outlets. I'm feeding the wire from this box to my new box. This is a used electrical box that already has a hole punched out for the wires. When you turn these screws in after inserting the box through the drywall, these tabs open up and the more you drive in the screw, the tabs get pushed forward into the drywall to help keep the box firmly mounted on the drywall. I'm stripping the wires using my handy dandy wire stripper. Since this outlet is in the bathroom, I'll be installing this GFCI outlet. To connect the wires to this outlet, first I loosen this black screw, insert the black wire which is the hot wire into the channel behind the black screw and then tighten the screw. I do the same with the silver screw. 
I loosen the screw, insert the white wire, which is the neutral wire, into the channel behind the silver screw, then tighten the screw. I make sure the wires are connected firmly. Lastly, I unscrew the green screw, insert the bare copper wire, which is the ground wire, into the channel behind the green screw, and then tighten the screw. Here are some better views of the channels that I've been talking about. By the way, these screws that are taped over with this yellow warning sticker are for attaching the load wires going out to other outlets. I don't have any outlets downstream of this one, so I'm leaving these screws alone. Now, let's connect the wires to the existing outlet. After pulling out the outlet from the box, if you see that you have only one set of wires connected to the outlet, then you can simply connect the new wires to the other set of two holes or screws in the outlet, like the way it's already been done here. You would connect the black wire, the hot wire, to the brass screw, by inserting it into the hole next to the brass screw and connect the white wire, the neutral wire, to the silver screw by inserting it into the hole next to the silver screw. By the way, you can also wrap the wires around the screws instead of inserting them into the holes. Lastly, you would connect the new copper ground wire to the existing copper ground wire and to a third copper wire, which is referred to as a pigtail. And the pigtail wire that you're seeing here gets connected to the ground screw, which is usually green in color, but is blue on this outlet. And then you'd be done. This electrical box already has two sets of wires coming into it and connected to the outlet. There's a set of wires bringing electricity to this outlet, referred to as line wires, and a set of wires carrying electricity out to other outlets, referred to as load wires. I can connect my new set of wires to either set of existing wires to get electricity to flow to my new outlet. For this particular project, it doesn't matter whether they're line wires or load wires. So I'm going to select the wires coming in from the top hole because they're slightly longer and easier to work with. I'm going to connect my new black wire to this existing black wire. Watch carefully how I make the connection. Yes, I am cutting the existing black wire in order to connect my new black wire to it. I am stripping the ends of the wire that I just cut and am connecting them with the new black wire using a wire nut. I connect my new white wire to this existing white wire the same way. And finally, I connect the new ground wire to this existing ground wire the same way. I'm using pliers to straighten out the ends of these copper wires. And I'm finished with connecting the wires.
we are back in the bathroom to see whether the new outlet works. I switched the power back on at the breaker and now you can see the two yellow lights come on. 